This video will talk about multiple comparisons and two-way analysis of variants. We're going to talk about how to assess significant differences across specific treatment groups, assuming that we've already found a significant overall effect in the ANOVA test. Then we're going to talk about multiple comparison procedures, and we'll talk about one specific one in detail. We're then going to talk about how we draw conclusions about differences in population means and interpret from our output after doing a two-way analysis of variance. But first, to set the stage and talk more about how we compare different treatments, we're going to talk about experiment-wise error. Before we dig into that, let's review what analysis of variance is. Remember that we have different parameters of the ANOVA model, and those are represented by the population means mu1, mu2, and mu3. We think that they all share the common, the common uh, and the same standard deviation, which we represent by sigma. Now here we can say that the null hypothesis is that all of the means of our different treatment groups are equal. That is, mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3. Our alternative hypothesis would say that at least one sample drawn from those are different. And so then mu1 would not be equal to mu2 or would not be equal to mu3. So a likely case, if we do not reject the null hypothesis, is that we think that all of the sample means are about the same. We would reject the null hypothesis and favor the alternative if there's large differences across the different treatment groups. That is, our sample means are quite different when we compare x1, x2, and x3. Now, what we can do with the ANOVA is we might find out that the null hypothesis is rejected. But it doesn't tell us anything about which specific means are different from one another. And so this is the idea where we can use multiple comparisons to specifically test which specific means are different from others. Just like we can't use a two-sample t-test for three or more samples, instead we're going to have multiple samples and we need to employ multiple comparison procedures to say something about the difference between those many samples. So again, we might ask the question, can we use pooled t-tests? So this would test the null hypothesis that mu1 equals some mu j versus the alternative hypothesis uh, that mu1 or mu i is not equal to mu j. And we might do this for every pair of i and j when i does not equal j. And so if we had lots of different samples from, say, 1 through 100 different samples, However, we run into a problem when doing these multiple tests, and we need to think back to what the type 1 error is. And so here we're going to represent alpha by representing the probability that we reject the null hypothesis. That would say that mu sub i equals mu sub j, given mu sub i equals mu sub j, is actually true in the real world. And so in this case, we can say that alpha is a test-wise error rate. And so the idea is that we cannot use pooled t-tests. Um, and so we might think about, uh, let's say, an example where we're comparing the gas mileage for eight different brands of SUVs. We don't have any prior knowledge or expect any brand to perform differently from the rest. And so here we should do pairwise comparisons. But only if we found, first in our analysis of variance, that all of the eight brands were statistically significantly different. And so let's go back to this term of alpha and think more about it. We call this uh, uh, the, the um, experiment-wise error rate. You might remember that type 1 error is denoted by alpha, or our level of significance. And this represents rejecting the null hypothesis when, in fact, the null hypothesis is true. So what we'll do is we'll calculate this experiment-wise error rate that adjusts the type 1 error depending on how many levels or factors we're comparing. And so the idea here is that it incorporates all different comparisons under consideration. So going back to our example with gas mileage and SUVs, it will compare the gas mileage of the first vehicle and the second vehicle, the first vehicle and the third vehicle, the second vehicle and the third vehicle. And so we'll compare all of those different comparisons that are potentially available given the data. 
And the way we represent that is the probability of making at least one false rejection, given we've got all of those different samples that we're comparing. And we denote that alpha sub e, and we call that our experiment-wise error rate. And so if we have m different independent comparisons, so we might be comparing 1 versus 2, 2 versus 3, 1 versus 3, well, we can represent that experiment-wise error rate with this formula. Well, it would equal 1 minus 1 minus alpha raised to the m power. And we know that that has to be greater than or equal to the level of alpha that we're interested in. And so commonly in our world of statistics, we set alpha equal to 0.05. Well, in this case, the value we get for the experiment-wise error rate would have to be greater than or equal to 0.05. So let's take a look at some example of different values of m and how they change the experiment-wise error rate. So this is when alpha is 0.05 and we have different various levels of m. So you can see that as we increase m, we increase the experiment-wise error rate. And so you can see that these, this error increases as the number of independent comparisons increases. And so we need to account for that in what we'll call multiple comparisons. So doing multiple comparisons will allow us to take into account the fact that we're doing and we're comparing so many different combinations of different samples in our analysis of variance.